in the family, maybe brothers, sisters, uncles, aunties, nephews, nieces, cousins, whatever. Relationships are relationships and their rules and policies remain the same. They are fundamental. It's only that levels of intimacy differ, but methods of relating are exactly the same. Glory to God. Okay. They say they can't hear me. Can you do the, the audio? No, it's there. No, there. Okay. All right. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Okay, let's start again, right from the top. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Apostle Joseph Helen, and I'm coming to you live from Nairobi, Kenya. This is Trapeza TV, the table of heavenly contents. It's a beautiful night, and I'm going to teach you about love. <laughs> qualities that your spouse cannot resist. Or qualities that no one can resist. Glory to Jesus. Okay, they say the audio is good now. Thank you. I'm glad that it's good. Let me take this opportunity now to um, acknowledge our online audience. We are so glad to have you with us tonight. I can see Alomu Pew saying how, uh, wow, Happy New Year, lovely family. Happy New Year to you as well, Alomu Pew. It's been a while since we interacted. And then Queer Denny says, this is a good one. How to develop qualities your spouse cannot resist. Hmm. <laughs> He likes the title. That's wonderful. So glad to have you with us. I can see Bonita Aimi. Oh, my precious friend from Gulu, Uganda. God bless you. So happy to have you with us. Isn't that wonderful? Neno C. Brudani. God bless you. He says, I like it. Isn't that beautiful? Please invite your friends. Tell your friends the Apostle of Love is online. All right. Love is oozing out of this place, I tell you. Ah. Glory to God, like a syrup. <laughs> so, I'm going to take you straight to the Word of God because that's where we get all the wisdom from. Okay? So, my scripture reference for tonight is 2 Second, Second Timothy 2 and from verse 24. 2 Timothy 2 verse 24. I want to teach you qualities that if you develop then your spouse cannot resist you. Qualities that your spouse will not resist, qualities that no one can resist if you develop these qualities, okay? And the Word of God contains the wisdom for us. So let's go straight there. So the book of Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 24. Glory to God. I can see Bonita saying, wow, I'm humbled, Apostle. I love you so much, my dear. Aren't you just awesome? Glory to God. This is the apostle of love. So in this arena, I will keep giving you love. I'll keep saying I love you, I love you, I love you. So get used to it. If you've been uh, traumatized or you're raised badly, those words might sound strange to you. But as the more you hear them, the better you'll feel. Okay? So I love you. And I need you to know that this brand new year, the love of Jesus Christ comes out of my heart, right into your heart. In Jesus' name. All right. The so 2 Timothy 2.24, and the Bible says, and the servant of the Lord, and the servant of the Lord. So now, first thing, glory to Jesus. Franz says, good evening, bring them on. <laughs> How are you doing, man? Good to see you. God bless you. I can see you have a nice smile on your face there. That's wonderful. Okay. And the Bible says, and the servant of the Lord, and the servant of the Lord. So, first quality. Hmm. You have to be a servant. You see, some, sometimes when I talk about these things, people think I'm going to bring something that's so out of the normal. Yeah? But success comes when you pay attention to basics, things that are basic. Success in relationships will come when you pay attention to the very basic things, the fundamental things, the elementary things. So you need to be a servant. Now, the Greek word for servant is doulos, somebody who serves another. In fact, it's the same word for a slave, a bondman, you know. Somebody who gives themselves up to another person's will. Giving yourself up to another person's will. For example, I'm a servant to my children. You should see me when they ask me to do things for them. I remember there's a time uh, over Christmas I bought my child, my son, a gun. 
And this gun wasn't shooting. So, you know, you load it and he tries to shoot and the thing doesn't shoot. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I wasn't too happy because he couldn't use his gun properly. And it was late in the evening. The next day, I drove all the way going to replace that thing, you know, because I gave myself over to the will of my child. So the first quality you must develop in your relationship is give yourself over to the will of that person. The same way when my son or my daughter says, Daddy, do this and that, even though they say them, they say those words with such sweet little voices, but for me, I feel like I've been given instructions I must obey. You get that? I have to do it. I feel restless until such a time that I've done what my child asked me to do. So to that extent, I've given myself over to the will of my child. And that's what is called a servant in the Bible. Quality number one, be a servant of that person that you love, okay, or that person that loves you. These are qualities that your spouse will not resist. When they say something, you do them. When my wife asks me to do something, oh my goodness, I'll do it. I will do it. If she says, honey, I need this and that, I will do it. I remember when she was about to give birth to her firstborn. And she said she needed a certain dark chocolate in a certain specific shop. <laughs> I drove all the way in the thick of traffic. And I went and bought that very thing and brought it to her. Do you see? That is giving yourself over to the will of the person you love. It does not make you less. No. It's a quality that's required in relationships. So you have to be a servant. But then not just a servant, but you also need to be a servant of the Lord. So the Bible says here, a servant of the Lord. So it means you also need to give over your will to Jesus. So the woman must give her will to Jesus. The man must give her. Uh, his will to Jesus. You must be a person that when Jesus says by his Holy Spirit, pray, you pray. When he says study, you study. Okay? That's what you must do. You must be that kind of a person. Okay? If he says repent, you repent. If he says say sorry, you say sorry. If he says ask for forgiveness, ask for forgiveness. So first thing, you must be a servant. You must have that servant mentality. You must give yourself over to the will of the person that you love. First, you must give yourself over to the will of God, the will of Jesus. Okay? You must give yourself over to the will of Jesus. That means give yourself over to the word of God. And then give yourself over to the will of the person you love. So this has nothing to do with who is the leader and who is not. This has got everything to do with the needs of the people that we love. So if the person you love has a certain kind of need, give yourself over to their will so that you can meet that need. Okay? And then you start getting the satisfaction that comes with meeting needs. Let me tell you, when you do something good for somebody, even if you don't get any monetary benefit as a result, there's a great feeling you carry with you. Just knowing you put a smile on someone's face. So, servant first of the Lord. Second of the one that you love. Did you get that? Those are the qualities you're talking about. So, the Bible says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive. Second quality, stop fighting. Second quality, stop fighting. Quality number one, give yourself over. Give your will over to the person that you love. So that when they indicate a need, you meet it quickly. If they're going through something, you want to mitigate it first, really quickly. Glory to God. The Bible says you must not be a person given to strife. You must not be a person who fights all the time. Always at war. Always contending. Always full of strife. You must get rid of things like that. Okay? These are the qualities that your spouse will not resist. These are qualities that your boss will not resist. These are qualities your fiancé will not resist. These are qualities your partner in business will not resist. And if anyone continues fighting you when you have these qualities, then they are the problem, not you. And of course, on the face of the earth, there are people like that. There are people that are never impressed by anything. It doesn't matter what you do. Bend back double. Yeah? Jump, jive and well. Sober salt. Lie on your face. Lie backwards. Lie on your side. They still want to be pleased with you. They are there. And those are the people. Just leave them alone. Love them from a distance. Okay. France says our African mentality of being a man oppresses those qualities. Hmm, I'm a man. I give commands, but I don't get commanded. Ha! 
And that's the reason why Africans tend to die the way they do, especially in wars and civil strife and tribal conflict and all those other things. Have you noticed that the civilizations that rule the world are very gentle when they're dealing with each other? Have you ever noticed that? They are so free. Civilizations that rule the world, for example, the European and the American civilization, is a civilization where people's rights are met. You hear a lot more darling there than you do this and that, you. Instead of saying you come here, they say sweetheart, please come. Have you ever noticed that? Civilizations that are rich and prosperous and that rule tend to be gentler when they're dealing with each other. And they tend to let people express themselves a bit more. In fact, most of the romantic novels we've read are written by them. Yeah? If you read some of our novels, they're so full of violence. And <laughs> yeah, even if the person you love is commanded violently. You, come and cook for me. What are you doing there? Go to the kitchen and cook for me. That's a loving man talking to a loving wife. It's so sad. So we've got to get rid of the African culture and develop godly culture. The culture of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, even European culture, American culture, Asian culture, African culture, whatever culture, is not good enough. We must develop the culture of the one that created us because we're made in the image of God and in his likeness. We need to be like God, not like our tribe, not like our race. Glory to Jesus. Ah, France is very civilized, those ones. It's true. You go to a place, even when they're arresting somebody, they're polite when, they, when they're at it. You see, oh, in, some, in some cultures, just meeting a police officer is torture in itself. Just looking at a police officer, you want to avoid the police officer. In other cultures, when you are looking for direction or looking for a shop, you talk to a police officer. You understand? These are people who have the Bible infused into their system for a long, long time. And such cultures cultures tend to fail when they start neglecting the things of God. But let's carry on. So number one, you need to give your will over to the person that you love. This is not about women giving their will over to the man and the man sits there like the king upon the throne who is never told anything to do. God Almighty is the king who sits upon the throne. But the Bible says he made himself of no reputation and became like a man. And even beyond being a man, he became like a servant. In fact, let me just read that for you. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, it says this, Let this pronoun be in you. Let this mindset be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So what is this mindset? Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Then I'll come back to 2 Timothy 2, 24. So Philippians 2, 5, it says, let this mind be in you. The word mind is for now, which stands for mindset. Let this mindset be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Look, this is God Almighty. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And if you continue reading John chapter 1, from verse 1, that without him was not anything made that was made. So everything that's made was made by Jesus. But this Jesus, the Bible says, he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Doulos, the same thing. Jesus became a servant. He gave himself to our will as his people. Oh my God. And the Bible says, and he was made in the likeness of man. And being found in, in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself. As if being a servant wasn't enough, he went even lower. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Result, therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Wow. You want to be great? Go down. Ah, Francis, actually what's wrong with Africans? Everything is wrong. Painful and shameful. Are we cast over? <laughs> no, we are making it. We are, France, we are making it. The, uh, the sun is shining here now. Hope is in Africa. Yeah? Look at how God has protected us, especially from these pandemics. Yeah? It, was, it, was, uh, it was predicted that Africans would die in their masses. Yeah? That the streets of African nations uh, and cities would be littered with corpses because of Corona. But look at how God has protected our continent. There is something happening here. The son of righteousness is rising in this continent with healing in his wings. So look, quality number one, 
Be like a servant. Jesus has demonstrated it. That though he was in the form of God. Though he was God. Though he made everything by his word. Yet he became. He made himself of no reputation. You see. To love a woman as a man, you don't need to have a reputation. I'm the hey man in this village. I'm the chief of the village. You know, I'm the mayor of the town. I'm, I'm the top politician here. No, take your reputation away and go down and give your will over to the person that you love. That's a quality that your spouse will not resist. Hmm. Jesus. Okay. And then number two, stop fighting. Avoid strife. It's a choice to fight or not to fight. You can choose to fight somebody or not to fight them. In fact, the fight that we've been asked by God to engage in is called the good fight of faith. The good fight of faith. That's the fight we've been instructed by God to involve ourselves in. And what's the good fight of faith? Getting to defeat lies by using truth. Defeat the lies you believe over the years by the truth of the word of God. Hallelujah. This is awesome and beautiful. Please share this. Just go ahead and share with your friends so that they can hear this wonderful message. Okay, let's carry on. So, uh, I'm taking you back to uh, 2 Timothy 2. And we are in uh, verse 24. And the servant of the Lord, so be a servant first. Do not be full of strife. Don't fight. Quality number two. The Bible says, quality number three, you must be gentle. Ah, this is beautiful. Be affable. Mm, gentle. Okay, mild, warm, and friendly. That's what gentle is there. In, in, the, in Greek, it's epios. Yeah? Epios. Warm and gentle. Let me tell you, these are characteristic traits I'm developing on a daily basis. You know, as a person, as an individual. You know, we don't just study the word of God. We just, we just don't pray to preach to you. We study the word of God and pray for character development first. That we develop these characteristic traits first. Then when we speak to you, the words we speak to you are backed up with integrity. They're backed up with fidelity. You get that? Huh? It is consistent from my heart straight to your heart. So I'm working on my own character to be as gentle as I can. I'm practicing with my children. I'm practicing with my wife. I'm practicing with the people that work with me, people around me. I'm trying to show as much, as much gentleness and understanding as I can. And where I fall short, I'm always quick to say I'm sorry. You get that? These are the qualities. Make yourself of no reputation. You don't need a reputation to be successful. Because Jesus, having, having uh, stripped himself of reputation and having become like a servant and having even gone to the extent of humbling himself beyond that and going to the cross, the Bible says in verse 9 of, of uh, Philippians 2, that now God has given him a name that's above all names. Okay? He has a name above all names. That's why when you say in the name of Jesus, things happen. When you say in the name of Jesus, miracles occur. When you say in the name of Jesus, you see power. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you getting it, you wonderful people? Are you getting it? When you say in the name of Jesus, you see power. You see anointing. You see glory. So, be a servant. Give your will over to the person that you love. Make sure that you you portray yourself as a person interested in the needs of the person you love rather than in your own needs. Think of the other person first. Be a servant. Serve them. Number two, don't fight. Okay? Number three, be affable. Be warm and gentle. A person that exudes warmth and gentleness. So when somebody comes into your environment, let them experience warmth and gentleness. They must not be tense where you are. There should be warmth and gentleness. Now, I'm not saying that there's no space for rebuke and correction. I'm coming to that. But your general disposition should be that of warmth and gentleness. So, I'll keep repeating. Number one, be a servant. Give yourself over to the will of the person you love. Number two, stop fighting. Just decide I'm not fighting this time around. Yes, I feel angry, but I will control myself. I feel annoyed, but I will control myself. I will still express my anger and my annoyance without having to hit the roof or having to shout. The idea here is to be understood, so you don't have to shout, okay? If you do that, then the Bible says you need to be affable, gentle, epios, gentle. 
warm with a disposition of gentleness. Ah, mante librina sobre quita la pradi. So these are qualities your spouse will not resist. These are qualities your partner cannot resist. These are qualities your brother or sister cannot resist. But if they persecute you because you're gentle, that's okay. The Bible says rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Aha. Because those who are persecuted for righteousness sake are blessed. The Bible says great is your reward in heaven if people persecute you because you're right. Hmm. Let's carry on. Thank you, Jesus. So the Bible says be gentle unto all men. Be gentle, not just to your spouse, to everybody. Be a gentle person when you're dealing with a guard at your gate. Be gentle when you're dealing with the waiter or waitress in a restaurant. Be gentle when you're dealing with that teller at your banking hall. Be gentle when you're dealing with that teacher or lecturer in your university hall. Be gentle when you're dealing with that preacher or uh, these people who look after people. What are they called? Uh, the, the waiters in church, what are they called? Ashes. Ashes, that's right. <laughs> I said waiters in church because they're called dikonia. A dikonia means a waiter, someone who waits on the other. Okay. So, ha, glory to God. Nice, he says, awesome topic. God bless you, my dear. I love you so much. Oh, by the way, if you haven't seen me this year, Happy New Year! It's the year of teeth. The year when you'll smile. The year when your structure is going to be filled up with good things. The year of dominion, prosperity. The year of victory. The year of riches. Oh, yes, and you're not going to be sick this year. You're going to be healed. And if the year started tough, that's a good sign. If you started this year with some hardships, that's a good sign. Do you know why? Because God trusts you to conquer. So the enemy presented his worst very early in the year. Because the enemy knows you're going to be a first record with later. So get that out of the way, okay? Wipe the floor with it quickly so that you can enjoy that which the Lord has put upon your table. Amen! Glory to God. I'm so excited. Because I can see the money. I can see the wealth. I can see the prosperity coming your way. It's already coming upon me. So I'm going to I'm going to direct it towards you as well. In the mighty name of Jesus. Alright. So I'll keep repeating so that it sticks. Peter said I will not tire in repeating these things to you even though you're establishing the present truth. So I'm not going to stop repeating. Number one, be a servant. Give your will over to the person you love. Number two, stop fighting. Stop strife. Stop strife. Stop fighting. Stop contention. Say I'm not going to have to be um, fallen. I'm not going to have to be angry all the time. Let me let a few things go as well. Let me look the other way sometimes as well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then the Bible says you need to be affable. Affable. That means you need to be warm and gentle. A person whose environment is full of warmth, laughter, smiles. Your environment is gentle. Your environment is beautiful. It's the type of environment where children can thrive. Where children are not afraid. No one, no one is walking on eggshells around you. So it doesn't matter how highly anointed you are. It doesn't matter how successful you are in the society. Your environment must be an inviting environment. A peaceable environment. A pacific environment. A friendly environment. A person who is Ruth and not ruthless. The word Ruth means friendly. Okay? <laughs> Did you know that Ruth is actually a proper word? Ruthless means not friendly. Okay, Ruth means friendly. So you need to be Ruth. Glory to God, not ruthless. All right, you need to have scruples, not unscrupulous. You need to have conscience. You need to, you need to be chided by your conscience when you say something wrong. Or when you do something wrong, you need to go back and say, Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry that I was harsh. I'm sorry I was hard on you. That's how a husband ought to treat a wife. That's how a father ought to treat a child. You need to be gentle and affable. Glory to God. And you must be gentle unto all men. Yeah, the Bible says, apt to teach. Wow. Look at the next quality. Having been gentle to all men, you need to be apt to teach. Now, the word teach is paidio. Paidio, which comes from pedago uh, pedagogos. Pedagogos is a teacher. Paidio is the act of teaching. Paidion is the one being taught. It's like being in high school and then sitting in a chemistry class. So you become a Pideon if you're seated there and the teacher is teaching you. For example, now you're my Pideon and I'm the Pedagogos, okay? In English, they call it pedagogy, the art and science of learning or teaching, teaching and learning, pedagogy, okay? 
Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Bible says you ought to be apt to teach. Apt to teach. As in quick to teach. Slow to criticize. So if your spouse has a problem, if they have an issue, if something about them is irritating and you know the answer, you know the way out, instead of getting angry with them because we've already decided we're not going to fight, remember this year we're not fighting anyone. Yeah, we're just fighting the good fight of faith. That is truth versus lie. Where there's a lie, we put in the truth. And the truth destroys the lie, decimates the lie. Glory to God. So, if your spouse is a problem, you should be apt to teach. So first, you become a servant. Number two, you are not fighting. You've decided I'm not fighting anymore this year. Number three, you are gentle and warm. <laughs> Number, and, and then you're gentle and warm to everybody, not just your spouse. Number four, you are apt to teach. Yeah, paidio. This is the process of taking somebody through training. For example, my wife and I love to teach people music. And sometimes you have to hold your fingers if you're teaching you to play the piano. And you have to show you how to place your fingers on the piano keyboard. And how to use your thumb and then your index finger. And how to interchange them until you're able to use both hands interchangeably and independently. Then you combine them together. It takes patience. So you need to be patient with the person that you love. You need to be patient with them. It might take some time for them to get certain things. But listen, they already have declared that they love you. They already have declared that they want to stay with you. They want to be with you. So they have eternity with you. So give them the syllabus, you know, create the syllabus, okay? Create the lesson plan and begin to teach them these things. If you don't like the way they talk, teach them how to talk. Do not try to demand for something you've not invested in somebody. If you want to know definition, the definition of abuse, abuse is when you demand from somebody something you've not put in them. Abuse is when you go to the ATM looking for money when you know very well there are no facilities. You know that your minimum balance is negative, but you're still uh, slotting in your ATM card. And you're there keying in, prodding those keys with your fingers, thinking that if you prod them harder, the money will come. It doesn't work. So if you demand good behavior from your spouse before they are taught to behave that way, you're abusing them. If you demand good behavior from your child before you teach them how to behave, you are abusing them. If you want your spouse to speak well and you've not taken them through the speech training, you are abusing your spouse. If you want your husband to be extraordinary in finances and he's not been taught how to handle money, you are abusing that fellow. And this is what makes people angry and, and vexed. You know, this is what exacerbates problems. It makes things aggravated and difficult. You know, this, this is what causes people to create hills, you know, mountains out of a mole hill. When you demand for what you've not put in. So you must be apt to teach. This is very significant. You must keep teaching. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in class and you have a good teacher, even if you're not paying attention, if it's an English class, of course, after one time, you'll have a few English words that you'll be speaking. You'll be better in three months than you were three months before. You see, even the one who doesn't pay attention will grasp something. That's the beautiful thing about teaching. Apt to teach. Quick to teach. Apt to teach. Okay? Be apt to teach. So what's number one? Be a servant. Give yourself over to the will of the person you love. Ha. Number two, stop fighting. Number three, be gentle, affable. Be warm and gentle and friendly. Number four, be apt to teach. By Dior, teach this person. Teach this woman to look beautiful. You can't say, oh, you're just there looking ugly. Teach her how it's done. Go to YouTube. Learn how makeup is applied. How hair is done. How eyebrows are done. Eyelashes. How mascara is applied. How blush is put. All those beautiful things. Teach her how to dress up. Go to Pinterest and look at the, the modern things. They don't have to be expensive. You know, how does a dress fit? You know, let the woman look beautiful. The Bible says they need to be like the daughters of Sarah. Do you know how beautiful Sarah was? Do you know how beautiful Sarah was? Huh? She was so beautiful that when she went to Egypt, there was a standstill. There was a stampede. Everybody was straining their necks to see her as she strolled proudly with Abraham. Okay. Ah, because Abraham knew very well how to take care of his wife. The woman was so beautiful that the king forgot his throne. For one moment, he looked at her and just went, Hallelujah. I tell you, 
And the next thing that happened in that, in that palace, there was cacophony. There was no longer symphony. There was no music play. The king couldn't think. So he went to Abraham and said, I want this one. I want to marry this woman like the day before yesterday. No, last year. Yesterday is too, too, too long. I want to marry her before I was a king. Are you getting that? You see the way the Bible says Jesus Christ was crucified before the foundations of the world. So this guy wanted this woman the other day, the other year. And Abraham was so scared. He said, if I say she's my wife, they will kill me. This woman is beautiful. And I will be killed. And this woman will be married to the king. And that will be the end of the father of faith. <laughs> so he agreed with his wife. He said, tell them that you're my sister so that I can live. That's how beautiful Sarah was. So if your wife does not look beautiful, begin to teach her these things. There are so many husbands today that are happy with an ugly looking wife, but they're there salivating at their secretary because of the short dress she wears and the cleavage. Come on, let's just face it. Men like those things. Ah, yes, they do. But at home, the woman is dressed in a choir robe. She's dressed like she's going to outer space. Ah. Huh? You see, be a teacher. Teach fashion. Say, I like it when I see a bit of your legs, a bit of your cleavage and your shape. The, come on. You, holy people need to just give me a break. Christians. Christians are having it rough in business. They're having it rough in beauty. You're having it rough in everything. Huh? Come on. Sarah was so beautiful. That the king got her. She was the most beautiful person in Egypt. Now, if you know Egyptian women, and the way they have those eyes, their eyes look like goblets. And the way they paint them. And the way they know how to dance, if you know Egyptian women. And Sarah comes. And Sarah overtakes them all. All the Egyptian women were shying away as Sarah passed by. They said, oh my God, oh my goodness, look at how she walks, oh my goodness, look at her dress, oh my, look at her hair, oh my goodness. Oh. They were fainting. And Pharaoh said, I've got me a wife. Mm -hmm, I've got me a wife. Until God had to step in. God struck Pharaoh <laughs> with plagues. Until Pharaoh said, okay, 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 I've got the wrong fellow. Pharaoh said, I've got the wrong fellow. Oh my God. And Sarah was restored back to Abraham. And the Bible says that you women, you do well when you copy Sarah. So you husband, instead of saying your wife is ugly, your fiance is ugly, oh, she's put on weight and all that. Can you start training her? Do you know what happened to uh, Esther? When Esther was about to marry the king, do you know what happened? Even after she defeated everybody in the, in the pageantry, in that beauty contest, do you know what happened? For six months, she was going through beauty training and her nails were being done and she was being scrubbed with this and scrubbed with that and dipped in this sweet thing and dipped in that sweet thing for six months. And after that day, they changed the course and she was dipped in this oil and dipped in that oil and they're working and trying to look for ways to better our future. I'm so proud of you. Can you say words like that to us, people? See, this is why I keep telling you, I love you. I love you. I keep saying those words. Why? Because the Bible says love never fails. Why do people fail? Because they have never been loved. They've not been accepted. That's why people fail in this world. They don't feel accepted. They don't feel good enough. You see, yes, people will come to you with all manner of excesses. But the moment you accept them and you begin to love them, you start seeing a change. That's why if you notice a woman changing her dressing, if you notice a woman changing her lipstick and her makeup, there's a man loving her somewhere. Or she's found somebody who believes in her. That's why she begins to change the way she looks. Love always works. It might not work as quickly as your drug, but it works. I'm telling you, and it's sustainable. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me carry on studying this. Those are how many things? Four things so far. Apt to teach. Patient. You need to be patient because all teachers must have the fruit called patience. When you teach a child something and they're not getting it, be patient. They'll ultimately get those things. I remember at some point, you know, our children are homeschooled. So I remember at some point, there was one of the teachers, and I think about two years ago, who was saying, oh, this child is taking too long to start reading. And I said, relax, relax. You don't know who you're dealing with. 
This one is going to be reading like a rifle bolt, spitting out words left, right, and center. This one is going to embarrass Shakespeare, I tell you. Whether it is Romeo and Juliet or Macbeth, whatever books you talk about, or if you're in Africa, things fall apart, or the river between, any of those books. <laughs> yeah? And you know what? Give that child King James version of the Bible, he reads it like that. You see? So be patient when you're a teacher. Be patient. If your child is not getting it yet, they will get it later. But be patient. Glory to God. Be patient. Number one, be a servant. Give yourself over to the will of the person you love. Number two, stop fighting. Stop all the strife and contention. Number three, be warm and affable. Be pleasant and friendly. Number four, teach. Be a teacher. Don't demand before you teach. Don't demand before you teach. And if you're teaching, sometimes it might take a whole year before someone gets something. Just be patient. Number five, glory to God. How amazing. How wonderful. Be patient. La prete sira motele bradusta brande clibra costaga. Be patient. Okay. Glory to God. Verse 25, the Bible says, In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. In meekness, gentleness, mildness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Instructing. Again, paidio. Oh my God. Paidio. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Yeah. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of truth, that instruct, teach them, those who oppose themselves, those who self-sabotage, those who self-sabotage. You know people who sabotage themselves, they have the best interests at heart, but then at some point they panic and everything just starts falling apart. They meant well. They were cooking a nice meal. And suddenly something spilled, and another one spilled, and another one spilled. And the salt that was sitting close to the food that was being cooked, all of it has spilled into, into the sauce. Everything just goes southward. The Bible says such people, you need to instruct them in meekness. Teach them in meekness. Okay, Teaching is didact, uh, didactic. Okay? One step after the other. Okay, instruction is paidio. All right, taking somebody to school. It might even mean literal school. You might, you might have to go through some online training in certain areas. Like, ladies and gentlemen, I enjoy fashion. Yeah, I really enjoy fashionable things. So you always find me going to YouTube to see what's the latest thing. How do you combine this to, uh, with that? I like, I like having certain styles of doing my tie. And I keep wanting to learn what's the newest thing. I just love stuff like that. But I, I wasn't born like that. I had to study. I had to read. I had to watch videos. I had to go to school. You know, there's, there's, there's the, the aspect of training that will make you of higher value. So you have to train yourself. Glory to Jesus. Isn't that so wonderful? Yeah. So the Bible says in meekness, don't be rude. Don't be rough when you're teaching somebody who appears to, uh, to be gullible, or who appears to be rough, or who appears to make mistakes often. The Bible says do it meekly, with meekness. What is meekness? Gentleness, mildness, a mild disposition. Okay, be meek, be gentle with them, be humble as you do it. You say it's all right, it's all right, everything will be fine. You know, we can start all over again and cook a better meal. You, you get that? Or, you know what, it's okay. You tried your best, things didn't work the way they ought to have worked. Let's dial a pizza, all right? Or let's go for dinner in a restaurant if you have the money, that is. If you don't have the money, you say, Come on, let's try again. This one is too salty, let's try again in meekness. Oh, these things are possible. If the Spirit of God dwells in your heart, these things are possible. If you want to do it in your own strength, you will be frustrated and irritable. You've got to depend on the Holy Spirit. This is why it's important for you to talk in tongues. Pray in tongues. When you pray in tongues, all the mysteries of humility, all the mysteries of meekness, all the mysteries of gentleness, all the mysteries of avoiding fights and contentions will come upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Isn't that amazing? You know, sometimes people just want to be rough. That's not the way to go. And you ladies avoid bad boys. A bad boy is already bad. And the only result you can get from a bad person is bad result. Yes, of course, they give you a kick, but you don't need a kick. You're not a motorcycle that has to be given a kickstart. Okay? You're a child of God. 
You are a child of God, led by the Spirit, not driven by passions and pleasures. You're a child of God led by the Holy Spirit. You don't need a kick, you need a leading. You need a leading. Yeah? Led by the Spirit. A person who walks after charity. The Bible says, follow after charity. Walk after love. Be led by love. Glory to Jesus forevermore. So these are the qualities that your spouse cannot resist. Yeah? I like the way Italians put it. When you do business with them, they tell you, I'm going to give you a deal you cannot resist. I will give you a deal you cannot resist. So these are qualities you cannot resist. When you have the quality of a servant willing to serve. When you have the quality of peace, you don't want to fight anyone. Some people think that the only way you'll be recognized is when you put a fight all over the place. No, nobody recognizes fighters. Mm -mm. And fighters cannot build a thing. Remember, David was a warrior. And when he wanted to build a temple for God, God told him, you have fought. There's too much blood in your hands. You will not build for me a sanctuary. People who fight cannot be involved in real estate because they're people of war. You build and they blow things you build up. So you need to be a peaceful person to build anything. You need to be gentle and you need to be apt to teach. And after that, you need to be patient. And then you need to instruct those that oppose themselves. Those that are clumsy, they oppose themselves. They mean well, but they end up destroying. In their wake, there's destruction. They mean well, but when they open their mouth to speak, they say words that bring anger, words that hurt. But you can see their hearts are genuine. Such people, the Bible says, you need to meekly instruct them so that they may recover themselves. Because the devil has bound them. They need to recover themselves. Glory to God. Yeah? In meekness, verse 25 of 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25, that in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance, to the acknowledging of truth. Now the word repentance there is metanoia and it means change of mind. Change of mind. Their minds need to change. You see, as a man thinketh, so is he. If somebody thinks in a certain direction, it doesn't matter if you slap them, it doesn't matter if you whip them, it doesn't matter if you imprison them. As long as they've not changed their minds, they will not change their behavior. So the mind is changed when you teach. When you teach people, their minds begin to change. When you show them what to do, their minds begin to change. That's what I'm doing for you this moment. I'm teaching you so that there's a repentance, a change of mind. Ladies and gentlemen, repentance is not crying out for forgiveness. No, no. Oh God, forgive me. I've done something wrong. Oh God, have mercy upon me. Well, I'm not worthy of your love. That's not repentance. That's foolishness on rumping. Repentance is getting the right information in so that your mind is changed. Mm, that's what repentance is. Changing your mind so that you start thinking right. That is repentance. Repentance is not crying out for forgiveness. No. Repentance is getting the right information that leads you to the right direction so that you can do the right thing. That's repentance. So when you get this information in, for example, be a servant. Give your will over to the person you love. Number two, stop fighting. You see, you're beginning to think differently. That's called repentance. Number three, be gentle. Have this warm disposition of gentleness and friendliness. Number four, be a teacher. Don't demand for things that you've not yet taught. Don't say, my husband does not even know how to kiss me. He has to be taught how that is done. My husband does not know how to hug me or hold me. Show him, honey, hold me like this. It feels great when you hold me like that. When you handle me this way. Some people think you should just know. The Bible says, how will they know unless they are told? You can't know unless you're taught. Everything has to be taught. I remember many years ago, my wife and I used to house some young men. And these young men didn't even know how to use toilets. Every time we would go to the common toilet, we'd find, we would find it littered with uric acid, yellow substances all over the basin. So we realized that these guys, upon using that toilet as they were shaking well after use, they didn't know that it's, pos it, it's possible to, to sprinkle that uric substance all over the seat so that whoever comes to use the toilet will come and find it's all yellow. So we taught them. We said, first, aim well. Okay? Aim your equipment well and then strike the target properly. And after you're done, as you're shaking well, can you be closer to the, to the, to the basin so that you don't sprinkle that substance all over the seat? And then we said, as soon as you've shaken well after use, can you take a bit of tissue and wipe the seat? After doing that, hold this thing and press it down. It's called flushing. And make sure it's all nicely flushed. 
You see, we had to teach that. And some people expect that everybody knows how to use the toilet. No, not quite. Even people who are highly educated don't know how to use toilet. Have you ever been to a five-star hotel? And have you ever been to the toilet? People who go to five-star hotels are people who can afford it. Are you getting me? Front is so abused. <laughs> people who can go to a five-star hotel are people who can afford it. That means to some degree they are well-traveled. So it means they are well exposed. But if you go to that toilet, you find somebody deposited that whole mountain there and did not flush it. In some cases, you find somebody was actually standing on the seat. You find their foot, the, 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 the print of their shoes on the, on the seat itself. You wonder, what was this guy doing as he was uh, downloading substances here? Uh, Mr. Mwen will tell you rendering. Yeah? <laughs> as he was rendering. You know? <laughs> you wonder, why do you have to stand on the seat? So sometimes you, when you, when you go to, to uh, you know, back street or, or what do you call it? Um, you know, some parts of, of the city, uh, downtown, you'll find if you go to some restaurants downtown, when you go to the toilet, they, they put a writing there, don't stand on the seats. <laughs> then you wanna stand on the seats? We sit on these things. Do you know why people stand on that? Because you left uric acid and yellow substances there. So we have to teach the most basic things. So the Bible says, be up to teach. Be meek as you teach these guys who oppose themselves. Have you ever been to an airport? Have you ever wondered why airplanes smell? They spray them, but the moment everybody enters in, it smells. Because some people don't shower. They don't do it often. They've not been taught that it's important that you shower often. They say, oh, I had a good scrub on Monday. I think the next scrub will be on Friday. You see, they've not been taught that they sweat. And they've not been taught that when they go to the toilet and they just use the tissue, not all that substance is wiped off. So as you walk and as you sweat and as it's mixed with everything, it begins to smell. We have to teach these things. You understand? Don't just expect that someone will smell nice. Teach them that smelling good is something you work on. It's not automatic. So if your, if your spouse doesn't emit good smells, don't reject them. Teach them. Be up to teach. And in meekness, teach. they're opposing themselves. They're nice people, but they're not smelling good today. So teach them how to smell good, how to apply you know, perfume. You, know, don't, you don't spray perfume on your dress, on your clothes. It's, you, you spray it on your skin. Apply the cologne on your skin. Apply it here. And there, and behind your ears, and under your armpits, in on your skin, not on your clothes. Huh? These are things that are taught. Glory to God. All right, guys. I'm just about to finish. Let me let me complete this scripture. I told you qualities that your spouse will not resist. Okay? Developing qualities your spouse cannot resist. Verse 26 says. And that they may recover themselves. So it means these guys who are clumsy, these guys who are irritating, these guys who oppose themselves. The Greek word is so long. Anti Antidiatithemite. It's such a long word. I don't even want you to remember it. Just remember opposing themselves. Yeah? Antidiatithemite. Antidiatithemite. Opposing. Anti. Opposing themselves. Yeah? They think they are saying the right word and the, the word they speak is what caused them to lose the job. They said they're going to impress everybody. That as soon as they speak like this, everybody rejects them. But you mustn't reject such a person. In meekness, instruct them. There's gold in them. They, they are full of precious metals within them. They are gemstones. And if you instruct them the right way, you will be the one benefiting by all those wonderful things within them. The Bible says they will recover themselves, hallelujah, out of the snare of the devil. Because the devil has taken them captive, yeah, out of his own will. There are people the devil has made his own captives. But it is through Paideo teaching them, deductive teaching, that means progressive, one step going to the next, and you don't give up on them. Don't give up on them. You know, I've trained many people, some give up, and... It's sad that some give up and walk away. Some people walk out on me. I teach them and train them and take them to a very high level and then they get offended at some point and then they walk away. There are people like that and we love them as they go. But there are people who are willing to learn. They're willing to stick there. Don't give up on such people. 
They're willing to stick with you. Those are the ones you completely invest in. And you know, this year, I've made up my mind that those who help me, those who are around me, those who stick with me, I'm going to give my very best to them. I'm going to prioritize their needs. I'm going to prioritize their training. Those of you who've been with me throughout since you started this live feed, I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to train you in meekness so that you may recover yourself. So the enemy has nothing on you. Glory to Jesus forevermore. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, somebody asked me a question. And this question is found in 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Let me just take you there. Somebody asked me a question about it. And, um, and um, from verse 12, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12 says, But I, I do not allow women to teach, not to use up authority over the man, but to be in silence. Uh, somebody said, why is Paul being so hard on women like that? He's not being hard on women. The key word, he has to use up the authority, to rise above her authority. That's what Paul is saying. I do not permit women to teach their husbands or to rise above the authority of the husband. That's it. Teaching is okay, but rising above your boss is not a good thing. Rising above your husband is not a good thing. You, child, rising above your father is not a good thing. That's what Paul is saying here. Okay? Paul is not against women. But if you go to, um, in, in fact, if you start reading um, from verse, verse 9, in First Timothy chapter 2, it says, In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, that they need to dress modestly, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Paul is not against makeup and nice fitting clothes. Paul is saying that we want you people to be modest, depending on where you're going. So Paul did not say that wear a choir robe and you with your husband in the bedroom. He didn't say that. Paul said, if you're going to church, for example, then based on the way people conduct themselves in that particular place, be modest. If there are certain places where hot pants are seen as modest, so it's okay for them to wear hot pants if you're a woman. There are places where tight jeans, I like wearing tight jeans, you know, skinny jeans and stuff like that. I like fitting things. And there are certain places where they don't find that modest. So when you go to such places, then we wear belly bottoms or something. Okay? And but of course still look good yeah but depending on your civilization there are places where people have a civilization where it's okay to dress in certain ways so paul is not against you looking good looking hot and slaying paul is not against you being a slayer at all paul is just saying consider those who might not be at your level of freedom that's all he's considering so now if i post my pictures on facebook and you're offended by it my question is why are you on my facebook page in the first place why are you coming to a place to you know irritate me when it's my place where I'm, it's this is my jurisdiction it's my civilization so if you find my dressing inappropriate on my Facebook page then please unfriend me or don't follow me anymore follow someone else who wears you know uh, a cassock and and all those things that people wear yeah follow somebody who dresses like the Pope we thank God for the Pope but if that's what you'd like then follow somebody who dresses like that I don't like to wear the dog collar because I'm not a dog I'm a child of God um, so I'm not gonna wear a dog collar whatsoever I will dress in the most fashionable way possible because that's my civilization that's my phronesis that's my mindset that's the level at which God has brought me so anyone who doesn't have who doesn't like that should not be on my page this is how it goes but if I'm going to a place where everybody dresses in a, a tunic, then I wear my tunic as well. You see? So we become everything for everyone so that we may at least save a few. Glory to Jesus. Thank you so very much. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We'll be doing some revision tomorrow on certain topics we've dealt with. And I think I'll revise the topic on angels. What do you think, honey? That's good, yeah. Yeah, I'll revise the topic on angels tomorrow. So please tune in from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. East African time. Thank you so much for watching. Please share this broadly. Share widely with your friends. Let as many people as possible learn these qualities that nobody will resist. Only wicked people resist such qualities. Okay? And please follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. Follow us, follow us, follow us. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank God. We are moving quite well on YouTube, by the way. So many videos and so many subscribers so far. We thank God so much. We are making tremendous progress. I love you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a wonderful time. Bye bye.
na 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 na